Hey, is this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Cinderella Phenomenon. So we are back with Rod, and we are going to be going through his bad ending. So I'm just going to go through like with the other uh, routes that we've already done, and go through the whole thing to show you what you would have to do to get to his bad ending. So we are going to avoid the question this time. Rod begins to advance towards me, but he stops in his tracks when I speak. I do not have time to argue with you, Rod. If you are here to break or to break your curse, then you are not getting any help from me. You are not the only person I can ask for help. I turn away from him to follow after a Melanie, but Rod grabs my arm. I stop and turn to glare at him. What now? Where are you going? I wrench out of Rod's grip. Where do you think? I turn and walk away. Rod does not attempt to stop me. Alright, now we are going to skip to the next part. Alright, we are going to stay with the Melanie this time. Before I can decide what I want to do, a Melanie has turned to look at me with a smile. This is Melody. She just started working as my personal maid today. It's not like you to make a maid follow you around. And Melanie's expression quickly becomes apologetic. I'm sorry, Melody. I realize I didn't even ask if you wanted to come with us. I just expected you to tag along. Why is she apologizing? I am meant to tend to her regardless of where she is unless she dismisses me. I'm sure Melody doesn't mind. It's such a beautiful day today, after all. And Melanie turns to me and smiles. You don't, uh, or you don't have to wait with me if you don't want to, Melody. I won't be long. I only wanted to see Viorica for a bit. I haven't been able to see her as often as, since I've moved. Well, that's to be expected. Princesses shouldn't be associating with shop girls like me. Viorica has a point. Why does a Melanie insist on this? But you're my best friend. I am still not accustomed to the fact that I can't just visit you every day. Those were the good old days when we were still neighbors. I'd still live next to you if I could. Do you remember those games of tag we used to play together when we were children? Remember how Rod always lost? The two girls laughed together at the shared memory. I try not to roll my eyes. So, they were all childhood friends. Are you sure there's nothing I can help you with? We all turn at the sound of the or at the sound of the door chimes as a customer walks in. Excuse me. Oh, one moment. Viorica turns to a Melanie with a guilty expression. I'm so sorry, but I have to take this. No, no, it's all right. I'll come see you another time. I promise we can talk as long as you want, or as long as you want next time. And Melanie smiles and hugs her friend in farewell. I follow closely behind Melanie as she exits the shop. Rod pushes away from uh, from the wall that he had been leaning against once he notices us leaving. All right, now to skip to the next uh, choice. Um, why do you not want to break your curse? I don't need to explain myself to you. Do you even know how to break your curse? I do. So why are you not doing anything? It's none of your business. I do not realize the anger inside of me at first, and then I... Oh, whoops. Okay, we can skip this part. Alright, do the next part. Or not. Let's see. Only that he knows how to break it. Dolores sighs. Okay. Let's skip. Okay, so this time we have to tell him off. <laughs> Pushing people like that is not something a good prince would do. I do not bother to hide the anger in my voice. It was a nudge. Still, that was very cruel of you, your highness. Anger flares up in Rod's eyes as he takes a step toward me. Oh, look who's talking. Rod, stop that! Rod turns away from Melanie, ignoring her. Viorica, what are you doing here? Rod's voice is still cold, 
Viorica looks startled by his tone. All right, let's skip. Okay, uh, this time... Okay, this is the dancing scene. So we are going to accept, I guess. Well, if I do not accept, at least I can provide, or I could prove them. Whoops. <laughs> well, if I do accept, at least I can prove that I am the better dancer than, or I am the better dancer than Rod. Okay, I guess. Besides, I am supposed to be listening to a Melanie, no matter how absurd her requests are. If that is what you want. Really? And Melanie rushes up to me and takes my hand in hers. Thank you, Melody. I thought it might be an awkward request, but I'm so happy you've agreed to this. I turn to look at Rod, who's glowering at me. I am not dancing with her. She might step on my feet. And Melanie gives him a, dis a disapproving look. Rod, please! Rod eyes me warily. I step toward him and offer my hand. Shall we? Rod scowls at me for a few moments before finally taking my hand. All right, let's skip. So let's see, point out her mistake. She cannot remember something so basic. Wrong. What? I point at each of the glasses as I name them in turn. Champagne, sherry, dessert, wine, and juice. It is, the ba or it is basic etiquette to know all of them. And Melanie looks down at the glasses, flustered. You don't have to be so blunt, Melody. She's right, though. It's my fault for always forgetting. You know so much about... Oh, okay. Well, we've already read that part before in the good ending. So, chapter five. Let's see. He already asked me that before. Is he really that worried? I am not. I have never been treated with such disrespect by Sir Alcaster. He is needlessly hostile towards me. Rod scoffs. Before he was forced to show you respect because you were a princess. Now, because you are a commoner, he speaks to you as bluntly as he speaks to everyone else. That does not excuse his rude behavior. Rod shrugs. He's a lot like someone else that I know. He gives me a pointed look. He always finds a way to scold me somehow. I scowl at him before turning away. Alright, now we get to skip... If you if you are just now watching these like this starting now, uh don't <laughs> go to part 1 where I play through his good ending first. Okay, let's see. We are going to talk to him. And Melanie and Viorica are looking for you. When he does not answer, I cross my arms and raise an eyebrow. Do you hate Viorica that much? I don't hate her. Then why are you avoiding her? When we first came here, you actually looked friendly with her, but recently... This doesn't involve you, Melody. Fine. I will tell a Melody that you will be in the carriage waiting for her then. When Rod does not answer, I sigh and start to head back into the shop. Okay, this is where we run into Waltz. Um... Next choice. What? Okay, Rod is right. Sebi has blurted out his thoughts more than a number of times. What do you mean by that? Well, there are thoughts that he prefers to keep to himself, like his thoughts on karma and his feminine voice or his... Rod suddenly clamps Sebi's face, and I can actually see the poor plush struggling to get away from his hold. You are crushing the poor toy. Rod glares at me before finally releasing Sebi. Rod can be so brutal at times. I remember the time he almost threw me out the window for saying that one lady had a hideous dress. <laughs> Rod glares at Sebi once again. He readies his fingers to pinch him again, but Sebi hurriedly apologizes before Rod can touch him. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, here uh, we are going to thank him. Thank you. Rod turns away, his cheeks dusted pink. It's no big deal. I'm only doing this because I see how dedicated you are to breaking your curse. Because I want to get my old life back. 
And now that they have told me about Mother, I want to prove that I am nothing like her. Anyway, I still want to help you with your curse. Oh, okay, let's skip. Oh, uh, we are not going to tell him. Nothing. I doubt he would make any effort to trust what I have to say. He is always skeptical of me. Rod furrows his brows at me. You expect me to believe that? I'm not even sure that I am right. I would not want to accuse anyone without any proof. If you want this partnership to work, you should learn to uh, learn to trust me. Do you even trust me? I don't need to like someone in order to trust them. So? Are you going to tell me or not? All I can say for now is that we need to be careful around Sir Alcaster. He knows who I am. Rod stares at me for a few moments before finally nodding. Whatever you say. Alright, let's skip. Um, let's see. I am not here to judge you. Let's see why. So you can judge me? I'm not here to judge you. Why else would you be so keen on watching me? I am mostly curious. Curious? I wanted to know how good you really were. Then, yes, you are judging me. I hold out my hand as, or, and he stares, or and he stares, looking taken aback. I should not be scolded for only being curious. Why not just one little dance to prove how talented you are? Rod stares at me for a few minutes before reluctantly taking my hand. Fine. You better not step on my feet. Okay, now to skip. Alright, here uh, we are going to tell him. Those women were insulting the queen. I thought a lecture was in order. Oh, but everyone is entitled to their own opinion. What? I narrow my eyes at him. Something like this can't be helped. Bad rumors are unavoidable. Rod looks away, his expression suddenly pained. This wouldn't have happened if I hadn't wished for... Rod never finishes the sentence. He clears his throat before looking at us again. What was he going to say? Alright, let's skip. Okay, and then here we're going to dismiss the gossip. I fight the urge to roll my eyes. How can Ophelia believe such nonsense? The rumors are baseless. Then Rod didn't step in to defend you from those noble women? How did she know about that? Ophelia sighs, and she takes or takes in my shocked expression. You don't need to hide anything from me, Melody. Did you think I would be mad if the rumors were true? Regardless, a member of the royal family cannot end up with a servant. Where there's love, there's hope. All right, we've read this. Uh, he skulls, but does not say anything. We're not going to say anything either. I feel abruptly tongue-tied when I come face to face with him. It is likely that my telling him off will result in some sort of altercation, and that would not be good. What? I have better things to do than be gaped at. Rod turns away from me. All right, now to skip. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, let's see. That is something you do not need to know. We're gonna get angry at him. Rod's coldness grates at me, and I find myself snapping at him. What is wrong with you? Excuse me? All I am doing is trying to help you break your curse, but you are acting as if my trying to help you will only make things worse. No, I am only insisting that I do not need your help. We are partners, Rod. I know that doesn't seem to mean much to you, but it means something to me. I intentionally soften my tone when I realize that I have been shouting at him. You should let me help you. What for? Just because you've somehow managed to get two good deeds on your own doesn't mean you can help me at all, Melody. Frustration courses through me as I clench my hands into fists. Why must he be so stubborn? Is he so certain that I will not be able to help him at all? Alright, skip time. Running away solves nothing, Rod. You're one to talk. Telling you about my curse won't change anything. The outcome will always be the same. Leave it alone, Melody. It's for the best. Alright, we can skip now. Alright, here we are going to warn Rod. 
My eyes fall on Rod. I notice that he is leaning against one of the walls, away from the crowds. I head directly for him, moving quickly, so that Varge is not right behind me. Rod! Rod frowns at me as I come to stand in front of him. What? There's a man here called Varge. I think Sir Alcaster brought him. Sir Alcaster? Apparently, Varge is one of the suitors for Melanie's hand. Rod gazes past me at Varge, his eyes narrowed. Is that him? Is that Varge? When I turn, to, uh, turn back to follow his line of sight, I almost gasp in shock. Varge is bent over one of Melanie's hands, clearly having just pressed a kiss to the back of it. You should have kept him away from M. But Rod and I are not too far away, so we can hear him clearly. But the throne room is already hushed at the sight of the crown princess being so boldly directly addressed. May I have the first dance, your highness? I feel sick. Oh, oops, okay, we can skip. Okay, so that was when Sir Alcaster got arrested or whatever. So let's see, tell me, Melody, what is he to you? He is a friend. A friend, you say? Is that what he really is? Yes. Oh, the disgruntled look on Prince Rod's face says otherwise. I wonder why. You don't see, or if you don't cease talking right this instant, I will have the knights escort you out. Of course, I apologize for my rude behavior, your highness. <laughs> um, okay, and then we skip. Okay, so this was, I think, um... The night before the Orca gets married, I believe. So let's see. Was Sir Mithros really speaking the truth? We're going to ask. Is it true that you will die when Viorica marries uh, Deckmond? I see you're still stuck on the same theory. Have you been snooping around again? Please answer my question, Rod. And if I am? Why do you not want anyone to help you fix this? I don't need to tell you everything, Melody. His voice is now soft, his expression tired. Alright, let's skip. Um, oh yeah, Rod kissed us, and yeah. Melody, I really am sorry for what I did earlier. I apologize as well. It was my fault for talking too much. Now you should stop insisting on helping me. I refuse, Rod sighs. You really are stubborn. That makes the both of us. Okay, skip. Alright, he looks crestfallen. Oh, this is right after the wedding. Are you alright? I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. But I'm tired, Melody, so for tonight, I just want to rest. Good night. Alright, so, the next chapter is gonna be, like, the ending part. So I'm gonna skip to the last chapter, and we will read through. I do plan on cutting out all of the skipped parts, so this is why we're here. Alright, see you in a bit. Or just now. <laughs> a strange heaviness hangs in my chest. Why do I feel like this is the last time I will see him? Or, okay, we can skip now. Chapter 10, Silent Farewell. When I push open the door, I find Rod kneeling down. A Melanie lies on the floor in front of him unconscious. A Melanie? She's fine. She's just asleep. Something glints in Rod's hand. Even from this distance, I know that it is the same knife that Melanie was holding earlier. Out of the corner of my eye, I see someone slouched against one of the pillars. Viorica! I rush to her side, then sigh, a re or sigh in relief when I see the gentle rise and fall of her chest. She is still alive! How did she get here? It was Sir Mithros' plan. I remember walking back to my room after talking with you. I blacked out, and when I came to, 
I was already in here with Viorica. I've already checked on her. She seems to be under some kind of sleeping spell. M came in just a few moments ago, passed me the knife, and then simply collapsed after begging me to kill Viorica. I think M is under a spell as well. Rod glances down at the knife in his hand, expression glassy. M almost convinced me. She pleaded that, uh, that I not leave any of them behind. It's not as if I want to die and leave my family, but... He stares at the knife for a few moments, then curses as he slams his fist into the ground. I can't kill her. Why would Sir Mithros want me to do this? Guilt floods my chest, making it difficult to breathe. I was the one who asked Sir Mithros to help Rod. He said he knew how to break his curse. But I did not realize that in order to break his curse, he needed to kill the person he loved. I relied entirely on the story of Melanie told me, and that was my biggest mistake. I should have read the full fairy tale. I could never kill her. Such a shame. Sir Mithros emerges from the shadows, looking at us with disappointment. To break his curse, Prince Rod must kill his beloved with the knife his sister has brought him. Just like in the fairy tale. Mithros turns to Rod. And here I thought that your sister might be able to change your mind. You were, after all, supposed to do this of your own accord. I was wrong. I shouldn't have underestimated your stubbornness. Casting a spell on you would have solved this problem entirely. Why are you doing this? Well, Sir Mithros shifts his gaze to me. Rod follows his gaze to me and raises his eyebrows. There is no use lying to him now. I asked Sir Mithros to help me break your curse. You what? I didn't know that you were meant to kill Viorica. I... Rod shakes his head, his face marred with disappointment. Anyone who tries to help me will inevitably make things harder for me, Melody. I wanted to help you, Rod. I've already made up my mind. If you really want to help me, then please respect my decision. Please. Shame. And here I thought I would be or I would be witnessing a dramatic finale tonight. Sir Mithro starts to walk away. I am about to chase after him, but then I realize that there is nothing else he can do. Rod has made his decision. I feel my heart plummet as I slowly nod at him. So there really is no other way. I could never break my curse like this. Viorica was my first love. And my good friend. And besides that, my love for her faded a long time ago. She's been replaced. You've been my beloved for quite some time already, Melody. But it doesn't matter, does it? I will die soon. Rod! I feel a heavy weight on my chest. If, or as if some force is crushing my heart. I am sorry. I promised myself that I would save your life, but I... I failed. I blink back the tears that are brimming in my eyes. Rod stands and moves over to stand before me. He places a hand on my cheek. You've done nothing wrong, Melody, so please don't blame yourself. What did I expect to happen? Even if Rod had killed Viorca today, he would have carried that burden for the rest of his life. And all because I asked a witch to make him do something he did not want to do in the first place. Rod reaches for Sebi and places him in my hands. Once the clock strikes twelve, I'm going to disappear. It's really a shame that I'll be disappearing on your birthday. It would have been nice to celebrate this one with you. Promise you'll take care of my family for me. There must be another way. You cannot go just yet. I'm sorry, Melody. I cannot even bring myself to consider what is happening. Panic engulfs my senses as I stare at Rod, who is becoming translucent. Rod, you are... If only I could be with you and everyone else just for a bit longer. Despite the fact that his words waver, when Rod looks at me, his smile is bright and warm. My vision blurs as tears gather in my eyes. I like you, Melody. 
If we'd had more time together, I think I would have grew, or I would have grown to truly love you. In the next instant, his body was dissolved into soft orbs of light, or has dissolved, sorry. The light gathers in, er, in the air, then begins to fade. I am so sorry! The end! Bad end! Dang! I am so sorry, our little mermaid! Oh, that was really sad. That almost got me crying. Okay, Merman's Remains was the achievement unlocked there. But all right, guys. So that is it for Rod's Root. So next time that I record Cinderella Phenomenon, we are going into one of the last two guys. So if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, by subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.